So for number four with the acid base reaction, we're going to bond our cation of sodium to the anion chlorine and then our cation of hydrogen to the anion of hydroxide. So remember your cations and anions switch partners for the products that you're creating on the other side. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So then if I have sodium bonded to chlorine, remember sodium has a plus one charge and chlorine has a negative one charge, so when they crisscross their charges, we would just write it as NaCl. The way that we would show our first reactant um, in terms of the particle diagram is I would draw sodium with a plus one charge and I would draw hydroxide with a negative one charge. My other aqueous reactant is going to be hydrogen with a plus one charge and chlorine with a minus one. So all we're doing is separating these out into the actual ions that they would form. Then I'm going to take my blue color so that I can represent the water. The water is going to be represented the exact same way that it was in the other particle diagrams that we did. So remember that you have your hydrogen end of the molecule and then your oxygen end of the molecule. If you're going to draw it correctly, the oxygen really should be larger than the hydrogens. Um, but what really I'm looking for is that it's oriented the correct direction. So either that way or this way. Keeping in mind that the hydrogen end is going to be positive, and so that's going to be towards your negative ion, and then the oxygen end is negative, so you'd orient that towards the positive one. So if I started with my hydroxide, if I wanted to show that this is dissolved in water, that means I need to dissolve or surround this solute with my solvent particle of water. So I'd take my positive hydrogen end, show that it is orienting itself close to the negative hydroxide ion and the oxygen end, the single side is away. So somebody asked in a previous class um, how many you need to draw and the answer is just you need to surround it so it needs to look like it's completely covered but that might be different numbers depending on how large you draw them. So that shows me that the slightly positive end your hydrogen end is close to your hydroxide, and then the sodium would just look the opposite. So I would do my oxygen end towards the positive ion. Good enough. And then these would be the same. So I would have things facing away from the hydrogen and things facing towards the chlorine. Again, going through when you have space to go and actually put dots on here. And then the other products that we would produce, so if my ions are switching partners, again, I have sodium bonded to chlorine. Now I have hydrogen with its plus one charge bonding to hydroxide with a negative one charge. So that would create H. OH, or hydrogen hydroxide, which is also known as what? H2O. H2O. Water. Water, perfect. So then part of what you're supposed to do in this section is use your solubility chart, which is either on the back of your notes packet, it's the last page, or it's on the back of your periodic table, or there's the little version of it on the top of this page, um, to determine if your products are aqueous or if they are going to be a precipitate. So the insoluble means it's a precipitate, um, soluble means that it would be an aqueous solution. So I have NaCl. I go up here, look up chlorine, which is here in my soluble section. My chlorine is going to be soluble unless it's bonded to silver or lead or mercury. And in this case, it's not bonded to any of those. It's bonded to sodium. So this one is soluble, and we would call that aqueous. So I'm going to write a little AQ as my state of matter next to um, sodium chloride. And then next to H2O, or next to HOH, it doesn't matter how you write it, the state of matter that I'm going to write for that is just a liquid. Because water is not an aqueous solution, since water is not dissolved in water, water just is water. So we're going to call it a liquid since that's the state of matter. Um, yes, water can be a solid and water can be a gas, but unless something is happening in the reaction to indicate that a gas is being produced or that, um, there's like a massive temperature change or something, we're not gonna assume that it's changing state. So are we good so far with our particle diagrams and then predicting the products? Both of those are pretty 
straightforward in terms of what we're doing. The only part we're adding on is how to figure out the overall ionic equation and the net ionic equation. Um, so, first let's balance this. This one, I have one, 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 one. There are no coefficients needed, so this is already balanced. So in this equation, when I do the overall ionic equation, it does need to be balanced, but just like before, if you, if the, sorry, if the coefficient is supposed to be one, you don't have to actually write it, um, because you know that if you listed it at all, there's only one of them. So I would list each ion separately. So I would have, my pen is cutting out, sodium with a plus one charge plus my hydroxide, which is OH with a minus one charge, plus the ions from my next compound, which would be hydrogen with the plus one charge, plus chlorine with a minus one charge. And then you're on your product side, so you'll show that with an arrow. And then you have sodium with a plus one charge, I'm just going straight through the equation. Chlorine with a negative one charge, plus hydrogen with a plus one charge, plus hydroxide with a negative one charge. So if you did this correctly, it should automatically be balanced based on the coefficients that you have. Um, in the previous example, the one up here, you will actually end up having coefficients, so I know we skipped over that one. Um, but there's coefficients, and when you have that, you'll have to distribute the coefficient just like you did when we were balancing equations before. Your net ionic equation is going to be only the equation for something that changes, for the actual reaction that takes place. And so what I mean by that is, did you produce something new? If something remains unchanged on both sides of the equation, that can effectively just cancel out, and we call those spectator ions. Um, so we're only concerned with something that changes its actual form in terms of the net ionic equation. So when we had aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous hydrochloric acid, if we produced aqueous sodium chloride, then my product is going to be sodium with a plus one charge and chlorine with a minus one charge in its aqueous form, just like it was when it started. And I know that because it says aqueous, and I know that because we looked it up in our chart. So my sodium is going to be dissolved in water, so that is in its aqueous state. And my chlorine is also dissolved in water in its aqueous state. So separate from that, I have this H2O or HOH that is not aqueous. It's not going to stay actually dissolved in its ionic form. We are going to put it together as a liquid. So I'm going to say that there is actual H2O as a liquid that was produced. So in order to form that liquid H2O, that means that this ion, the hydrogen, and this ion, the hydroxide, had to come out of the solution. They had to join together to no longer be aqueous like this to form the liquid water. And if those two came together, then that means that it had to use this one and this one. And so those are the only things that actually changed in this reaction. My sodium started as aqueous and it ended as aqueous. My chlorine started as aqueous and it ended as aqueous. So this is the same thing as this. And this down here is the same thing as this. Those didn't change, so those are what we call spectator ions. So your spectators in this example are sodium with a plus one charge and chlorine with a minus one charge, meaning your net ionic equation is just the stuff that changed. So I would have hydroxide with a minus one charge plus hydrogen with a plus one charge reacting to form H2O or HOH, you can write it either way as long as you specify that it's a liquid. So net ionic equation is just the equation of what actually changes in your reaction. And then the last example here is the double replacement reaction that's technically no reaction. 
So let's go through and remind ourselves what that is. So if I have sodium bonding to nitrate and calcium bonding to sulfur, I would end up with NaNO3 and CAS. So those have already been crisscrossed because I know that their charges are like this. So I'd start with my sodium, the plus one ion, sulfur minus two ion, calcium plus two ion, and nitrate minus one ion. So all I did was pull my reactants to put them in their ionic form like this. Again, if we are showing the actual particle, particle diagram um, with them changing their or showing that it's dissolved. I would put my oxygen side near the sodium and draw my water like this. And for my sulfur, it go like that. Positive hydrogen end of the water oriented towards the negative ion. And then same thing with this one. Okay. And then before we get too far, I need to make sure that my equation is actually balanced. So if I have two sodiums on this side, I'm going to want two sodiums on that side, so I use a coefficient of two. Then my sodiums are balanced and my nitrates are balanced. Everything else is already good. So for my overall ionic equation, I just go one by one and start pulling the ions out. But now I'm going to have to use coefficients because everything is not equivalent to one. So what I mean by that is that for my Na2, my ion itself is going to be sodium with a plus one charge, but that subscript of two tells me that I have two of them, so I'm going to put a coefficient of two in front of it. The ion that it's bonded to is a sulfur ion, and I only have one of them because that subscript doesn't apply to the sulfur. Then I add to that my calcium ion. Calcium has a plus two charge. I only have one of them, and then I add to that two NO3 minus one ions. After you get through all of your reactant ions, so you should have four of them, you go to your product side, and now, when you have a coefficient from your balanced chemical equation, that coefficient applies to both things behind it. So two sodium atoms, or two sodium ions, not plus two, sorry, plus one, plus two NO3 minus ones, plus one calcium with a plus two charge, plus a sulfur with a minus two charge. So to figure out what your net ionic equation is, you have to figure out what actually changes. And if we're starting with two aqueous reactants, because it tells me that they're aqueous, I need to figure out what is the state of matter for my two products that I created. So I made NaNO3, so I would look this one up on my solubility chart. NO3 is up here in the soluble section. And there are no exceptions. So if you have NO3 as part of your compound, it is going to be aqueous when it's dissolved in water because it's always soluble. So AQ next to that one. And then I look up CAS. Sulfur is in the insoluble section, but you can't just stop there and make assumptions. You have to be able to read the exceptions. And so calcium happens to be one of the exceptions for sulfur, meaning that when calcium is bonded to sulfur, it's going to do the opposite of what sulfur normally does. So instead of being insoluble, CAS is going to be soluble, meaning it's an aqueous solution in this case. So if I have an aqueous reactant reacting with an aqueous reactant, and producing two aqueous products, and that's all that's made, that means you started with all four ions dissolved in water and dissociated in water, and then all four ions are also going to be dissolved and dissociated on your product side. So this is where we technically have no reaction, 
And since nothing new was produced, you do have an overall ionic equation, but you don't have a net ionic equation since there's no reactions. There is no net ionic because no reaction occurred. I don't know if there's two R's in occurred. No reaction happened. Um, so nothing new produced. So even though these two products are technically two different products than what the reactants are that you started with, it is no reaction if they are in their aqueous state because all you really have is the same ions on both sides. You would have sodium plus one charge, NO3, the minus one charge, calcium with a plus two charge, and sulfur with a minus two charge. All of those still dissolved in water because of the way the reaction took place. So then you would show your water oriented around each of these the same way that they were on the reactant side. So go through when you have space and put the actual dots on here. I'm just quickly putting them around so that you can see what it is that I'm talking about. So hydrogens and oxygens. And that's it.